Hi, hello everyone. So today is a quick video on some of the kind of other bits of computers and technology that you might use a lot in your general kind of conversations with non-technical people. But I suppose like anything else, the whole point of doing computer science is to be able to, you know, explain the words rather than just use the words. So we're going to talk about images, okay, and storing images. Um, there's various formats you can store images in, PNGs, um, JPEGs, uh, bitmap, okay? Um, there are just different file formats that have different amounts of compression, different amounts of um, storage capacity and different resolutions and quality of the picture, okay? So th they're just, you know, they're, what we're really going to talk about is um, the very basic. Okay, then we're just going to go super duper basic in terms of this because at the end of the day, everything is stored as bits. Okay, ones and zeros. No matter what it is, whatever color it is, whatever image it is, it's broken down into bits. Okay, literally broken down into bits. Okay, um, so um, in its most basic form, um, they're all bit versions of bitmaps, bitmaps, okay? And they come in tiny little dots, and these dots are actual pixels on the screen, little cells that are embedded on the screen that will light up or not light up based upon whatever code is running at that particular time. Um, the color of each pixel is represented by a binary code, okay? So the number of colors available, okay, in an image is related to the number of bits that you're using, okay? If it's black and white, simple as enough. If it's black and white, there's only two colors, black or white, which means you only need one bit, okay? And that's going to be zero for white or one for black, simple as that. Black or white only requires one bit to work as a zero or a one. Okay, um, two bit images. Okay, you there are two bit images, and they can have variables of zero and zero, zero and one, one and zero, and one and one. Okay, so straight away with a two bit image, you have four possibilities. With a one bit image, you have two possibilities. Okay, so one or a zero. Here you can have a zero, a zero, a zero, you get the idea. So you can see where this is coming from. This is two to the power of one, two to the power of two. That's the number of possible colors you can have. Four, two squared is four, one, two, three, four. Two to the power of one is two. You either have black or white, okay? If you expand it out, you can get greater ranges for greater amount of bits. For example, four bit, Well, you're going to get 16 different colors. Okay. And obviously, you expand it even out even further. You know, 24 bit, you've got oh, about 16 million ish colors. So, you know, use 24 bits, that's three bytes worth. And you've got that much. Okay. Um, so most of most devices use twenty four bit color depth, uh, in with eight bits used to indicate the level of red, green, and blue, and then you know varying that you get the the whole full spectrum of the the rainbow. Okay, which is pretty cool. Okay, um, so a twenty four bit color depth should show every color you could possibly ever see, and it is true because um, the human eye I think can only distinguish about. 10 million different colors. So if you've got 16 million possibilities with a uh, three byte code, well then you're sorted for want of a better word. So that's how they design these. Now they've all had their uses over the time as technology has advanced and you know screens and monitors became more to the fore. It made sense to move on and to use more colors basically. Okay, the resolution, and this is important because some of you might ask about resolution. What does resolution actually mean in terms of a screen or something like that? Well, it's the density of pixels on a screen. So the more pixels per square centimeter, the greater the resolution, okay? 
and it's usually done in DPI. Now it's a bit old fashioned, it's DPI dots per inch. Okay, that was the old way of doing it. Okay, I don't, I think there's a new, I've seen it in centimeters squared and some of the European stuff, but DPI is still kind of used as a standard because Americans use it. Um, so that's the kind of, the higher the resolution, the more pixels in a certain area and obviously the better quality. So if an image has a resolution of 60, for example, 60 DPI, 60 um, dots per inch, okay? It means that in one square inch, so in that amount, you will have 60 pixels, 60 that way, 60 that way. So that's 3,600 individual pixels in there. So it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of pixels in there. If we increase it to 90 PI, that's 90 times 90. That's 8,100 pixels. Okay. So it's even better quality. But obviously, increasing the resolution or the depth means that there's more bits in the image. While that might improve the quality of the image, it also incre it, in it also increases the um, the size of the file. And if it increases the size of the file, it increases the work that the CPU has to do in order to render that image. Hence why, you know, graphics cards were, you know, designed and introduced because the burden of the coding needed for this level of resolution and, you know, use of the pixels in a coordinated fashion to produce the really high rendering stuff that they do nowadays requires a kind of a separate, for want of a better word, a separate brain for the computer so it can do two tasks at once rather than try to burden the one um, chip set with everything. Now, that doesn't, like, you know, most computers now come with just the one chip set. Okay, but they're built to be able to do a certain amount of hyper threading and stuff like that. But the reality is, if you're into your game and if you're into that level, you're going to need those those separate separate gra graphics cards to go in. Okay, and of course, this where this is what it comes down to: all the metadata that you're going to need. Okay, so metadata. We've talked about metadata before. Okay, it's all it's the all encompassing amount of stuff that's needed to do in terms of the data that's needed to do a task, okay? So if you have a file, the metadata on that file not only contains the bits for all the colors, but how to put them together in what order, and it has all the other information, like how to compress it, how to open the file, how to read the file, how to render the file, okay? It also tells you how high the picture is meant to be on the screen. Even if you have a giant screen, it doesn't mean you fill the whole screen with the picture. It has particular parameters, you know? Um, all these things without the metadata, the device wouldn't be able to display the image as it's meant to be intended. It tried to fit it across the screen and that would render it useless. Okay. So obviously computers are built in software to try and square that circle. In other words, if, if it's only meant to fit half the screen, they have ways of trying to ameliorate that to make it more, um, to make it more pleasing on the eye for want of a better word. Okay. Um, now, of course, they're the kind of words that you you come across. That's the kind of computer end of it. But what do we you know? If you go into a shop, and now at least you know you can talk to them about DPI and stuff like that. But what are, what are they actually um, talking about? What you'll see in the shop is words like UHD. Okay. So what is UHD? Well, that's a standard. That's 3840 by 2160 pixels. Okay, that's the standard. That's what you're looking at there. Okay, that's just the step up from HD, which is about 1280 by 720. 1280 by 720. Okay, and then full HD is um, what says 190 by 1080. And these are the word. These are the. It's not that number. This is the number that you'll find displayed all the time. This one here. 1080, 720. You'll often see that in the YouTube in terms of the resolution. That's the one they go on, that guide one, okay? It tends to be the one they go on. So if you think about it, UHT is exactly four times the pixels per field as full. So it's about four times. When you multiply those numbers, that sum 
I'll just do it for you. 3840 by 2160 divided by, in a bracket, 1920 by 1080. You see the number four? Crazy. Hence, okay, um, hence the term 4K. Okay, so now at least you know where 4K comes from. It's four times the actual amount of pixels as the step below it. Okay, um, and that's that's where it comes from. I suppose you know you learn something new every day if that's all you ever learn from me. That you know, um, listen, there are other things. Um, high HDR rendering has been used, and now they're even go further with the rendering. But that's the kind of basics that we're talking about here. So I hope that's given you a little kind of an idea behind some of this stuff. Okay, it was just a quick little video just on resolution, just in case you ever wanted to know and you were too afraid to ask. Thank you very much. Goodbye.